Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you very much for joining us today for our webinar on including a charity in your will. My name is Anne Fazakali, and I'm the head of philanthropy at the Bionics Institute, and it's my great pleasure to welcome you all to our event this afternoon. I'd like to begin by acknowledging on behalf of all our participants, the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their continued connections to land, sea and culture. And we pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. And we extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Tor Torres Strait Islander people here in Australia and indeed to all First Nations people throughout the world. So before we begin, I'd just like to mention a couple of housekeeping items. Um, please keep your microphone muted throughout the session. And if you have any questions, we really hope that you do have questions, please post them into the Q&A function that you'll see on your screen. Um, after the end of all three of our presentations, we'll take all the questions in one go. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge at this point um, and say thank you to all our donors, many of whom have been long-standing and very loyal supporters from the time that we began um, in 1986 as the Bionic Ear Institute, the developers of the cochlear implant, that fantastic device that has really changed lives throughout the world. And I know that uh, some of our donors are here today. So thank you for your generosity and support. We, we could not do the work that we do without you. Thank you. So in this information session today, um, we aim to answer questions that people have about the mechanics of how to include a charity in your will. We'll explain exactly what a will is, what it does, the different options that you have so that you can include the causes that you feel a real affinity with um, and really help institutes, charities to make a real difference to their work in the future. Um, so we personally have really benefited in the past from the generosity of gifts that have been left in our will. Um, it's enabling us to continue with our groundbreaking research uh, to help us change the lives of generations to come. So you'll hear from three of us today, myself, and Fazakali, Daniel Tomei, who's a partner at um, financial services firm Perpetual Private, and also Lucy McMorran, who's head of partner success at Gathered Here, which is the leading online wills company here in Australia. So in my short presentation, I'd like to um, talk about gifts and wills in general and the amazing difference that they can make to all charities, including the Bionics Institute. Um, so let me, without further ado, make a, make a start. So what is a gift in will? Well, you might hear it called a gift in will, which is the sort of modern phrase for what used to be known as a bequest. And it's what, it's the gift that you make, it's the donation that you make when you include a, pro a proportion of your estate or your assets to a charity in your will. So it's not necessarily something that's very straightforward. It's just nominating a charity in your will. And there are actually quite potentially quite serious consequences if you don't leave a will. Consequences for your family, for your loved ones and your assets. Um, and whatever your age, it's probably never too young, but I'll let the experts discuss that. But it's probably never too young to have a will to ensure that you plan appropriately for the future and indeed for the peace of mind of the people you leave behind. Um, and of course, by not having a will, it's then left to the state to decide who should benefit from your estate. So if you have a will and it's current and it's legal, it avoids, avoids delays, it avoids problems, and potentially avoids a lot of argy-bargy amongst family members and friends once you're gone. 
So an opportunity for you to leave a legacy, really to make a difference once you've gone. Um, people sometimes feel that, you know, they're not particularly wealthy. They feel they, they're not able to help others perhaps as much as they would like to. So leaving a gift in your will to a charity, it's a very practical way of making a difference to people's lives, but it doesn't necessarily affect the way that you live your life right now. And of course, it gives a certain continuity to the causes that you've supported in your lifetime. And, you know, charities like ours, we always want to do the right thing by our donors and really work on your wishes. And so that's why it's so important for us to understand clearly what your passions are, what your interests are, and what for you will make a real difference. So for us, you know, we've had some wonderful, very small gifts that have made a massive difference. We've had some large gifts. But for me, working with philanthropists, working with donors and supporters, I personally feel that people who leave a gift in their will are very special people, particularly at the Bionics Institute, where we work with very challenging diseases, very often diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis, where people are resistant to the drug treatments, other conditions like tinnitus that cause terrible mental health anguish, um, and issues such as Alzheimer's disease, which is we all know going to become more of an issue as the aging, as we all age more quickly as the population ages. So um, it doesn't really matter the size, even a really small percentage can make a big difference to our research. So what would the gift be used for? For us, it supports what we believe is the future of medicine, bionics, where biology meets electronics and together we can transform lives with very difficult conditions and diseases that people suffer from. So um, you might, we might use your money to buy complicated pieces of equipment to further our research in new tests, new diagnostics, new devices, new treatments. Um, we might fund researchers, though that's the most easy way for people to fund research by um, fellowships for researchers, whether at a very senior level or after their PhDs at a more junior level, and also student scholarships. If you think back to the start of where we were when we developed the bionic ear, the cochlear implant, a lot of that work was made by young PhD students, and we're wanting to develop those students because they're our research stars of the future. So that's why it's quite important if we can discuss the gift with you in advance and then we know precisely which area is really important to you. Um, we're working on a number of different innovation solutions. You'll see here some of our researchers, a couple of our devices, one the three-pronged device there used to uh, modulate the vagus nerve, very successful early stage um, results in terms of controlling uh, the terrible pain uh, that people feel, pain and stiffness from rheumatoid arthritis, and a very unusual looking device moved by the hand, measuring gait in Parkinson's patients. So very broad range um, of innovations, any one of which could end up being the next bionic ear that has helped hundreds of thousands of people. So here's an example of a lady called Joy. You can see her picture there in the top right-hand corner. Um, and Joy was a regular donor to the Bionics Institute for over 20 years. Um, she was really taken with the work that we did um, on the bionic ear. She was truly inspired by Professor Graham Clark who um, was the lead person in developing that device. Um, and Joy's family have talked about her having endless energy, always full of new ideas. Um, and that's why she just continued to give to us, even once we were working on other devices, not just focused on hearing. So she was the niece of William Buckland, whom some of you may know, a very prominent Victorian philanthropist, so she's continued that tradition of philanthropy in the family 
and her will was very generous to a number of charities, um, including the Bionics Institute. And in fact, her will um, was realized just this week and we received the funds. Um, and we're truly honored that Joy decided to leave this gift to us um, just to use the way we want to use, whatever our highest priorities are. Um, and we're just so delighted. Um, and we as a team, we're especially pleased that we got to meet Joy in her lifetime uh, and thank her in advance for leaving such a wonderful gift in her will to us. And one of the innovations that we're working on is using um, nanotechnology to deliver drug therapy direct to the inner ear. Very complicated, quite revolutionary. We think we've reached um, a potential breakthrough point and we hope eventually we'll be able to take this to market and commercialize this technology. Um, and we received a very generous gift in will from Stephen who again had been a lifetime donor to the Bionics Institute, really passionate about supporting us. Um, and his legacy really gave a kickstart to what we call our, our hearing therapeutics work, which could revolutionize hearing loss in that we believe it might stop hearing loss, which is really very dramatic. And what's interesting about this particular gift in Will is that it acted as a lever for other philanthropists to also give us money as well as government grants. So very useful in terms of levering other funding for us. And then um, we have a wonderful infant hearing test, um, which tests just how well young babies can differentiate sounds. And this is about really giving babies with hearing loss the best possible start in life. So they don't fall behind at school so that they learn how to socialize um, and really prevent them falling, falling behind, both with education and with social skills. Um, and the lady here, Jane, felt she couldn't commit to large gifts during her lifetime, has left um, a lovely gift of her artwork to us. So sometimes people may feel they don't have a lot of cash that they can give away, but they may have I don't know, stamp collections, jewellery collections, stocks and shares that can be converted to money. Um, and for this lady, uh, she's always loved the work that we do for young children. And that's where we will be directing her gift in due course. Um, and what happens when people give a gift to us in their will? Um, we welcome them to our community, not just the Bionics Institute, broader community, but a very special group of people who wanted to leave a gift in their will that we call the catalyst community, because we believe people who leave a gift in their will are really very special donors and they're catalysts to the work that we do here. So just a small overview of the work that we do, what we're able to do with gifts and wills. Um, and I'd now like to hand over to Daniel, so Daniel Tomei is a partner in Perpetual Private. Um, he'll explain to us, as an expert in estate planning, he'll explain to us how the whole will system works, what can go wrong and what does go wrong, and what are the key things that you need to consider, both when you're making a will and when you want to leave a gift in that will to charity. And just by the way, that wonderful lady behind Daniel left a gift in her will that funds people involved in the arts. But I'll let Daniel give you more detail <laughs> on that. Daniel, thanks. Uh, thank you very much, Anne. Uh, hopefully everyone can see that. I've taken over the slide presentation. Um, yes, well, good afternoon. And, and thank you, Anne, for, for that introduction. Um, as, as Anne mentioned, uh, I'm a partner here at Perpetual Private, um, which is a wealth manager, a trustee company, and, and a financial advice firm. Um, I've been working with clients for over 28 years now as an advisor, and really uh, a lot of what I do is helping individuals and families articulate their charitable intentions and uh, really solidify their charitable legacy. And that's a good segue into uh, speaking of legacy. Uh, it, this lady behind me is... Um, 
Alice Bale. Uh, I sit here today in, the, in our offices in Melbourne, uh, in the Alice Bale room. Um, this portrait behind me was actually a finalist in the Archibald Prize in 1932. Um, the artist itself uh, actually won the prize for another painting, and Alice was actually uh, had painted a few uh, that were that were finalists as well. So um, the reason I mention that is each of our, our our meeting rooms here are named after a philanthropist uh, that has cemented their legacy uh, through a request to charitable uh, causes in their will. Um, for Alice's part. Uh, she was passionate about art and in particular portraiture, uh, and she set up what's called the AME Bale Traveling Scholarship and Art Prize. Uh, she died in 1955. Uh, she started the prize with just 47,000 pounds. Now, the think about the power of, of a gift. Um, it now provides $50,000 award biennially to Australian artists with a talent and, and passion for painting. Philanthropy really is an incredibly powerful tool for the betterment of our society, for the betterment of whatever area you're looking to uh, support in your charitable endeavors. Um, and there's lots of different ways to do that. Um, I'm here specifically to talk to you about uh, estate planning um, and uh, uh, more specifically about uh, for, uh, you know giving to charity in your will. Um, now, I do have to put up a disclaimer, importantly, because we provide advice. This uh, session is general advice only. Uh, no one's personal circumstances, of course, have been taken into consideration. So I, I urge you to seek personal advice uh, prior to acting on any of the content in today's session um, going forward. So um, a quick one uh, before I begin on Perpetual Private, who we are. Uh, we're part of Perpetual Limited, uh, a listed wealth management firm. Um, we were established in 1886 as Perpetual Trustee Company Limited with um, uh, Australia's first Prime Minister, uh, Sir Edward Barton, at the helm. Um, our first charitable trust was established in 1887, still providing meaningful charitable benefits uh, to this day. And on another note, um, one of our other philanthropists throughout our history, Vera Ramashotti, uh, established an, uh, an award for medical research, which uh, supported the, the early work uh, and the transformative work of Dr. Uh, of Professor Graham Clark in his work towards the genesis of the cochlear implant. So we feel a, a very strong affinity with the Bionics Institute and uh, very proud to be uh, associated with them. Um, now, uh, as I mentioned, we, we, we work with uh, clients across the whole spectrum of financial advice. Uh, from investment management all the way through to estate planning and philanthropy. And that's really what I'm here to talk about today. Um, we, as a trustee company um, and one of the largest managers of philanthropic wealth in Australia, we are in a unique position uh, among wealth managers uh, and wealth advisory firms to provide advice on estate planning and philanthropy, which really is why I'm here to speak to you today. Um, there is a link uh, to our website at the end of the presentation, should you wish to know uh, a little bit more about what we do. Now, estate planning is uh, a very broad and complicated area of advice uh, that covers a lot more than drafting a will. Um, ultimately, it's about uh, providing your beneficiaries with a clear view of your wishes and really providing them with the tools that they need to fulfill them. Um, one of the most important aspects of estate planning for most people is uh, providing a charitable legacy. Um, we're often not able to provide as generously as we'd like to, or to give away, give uh, as generously as we'd like to during our lifetimes. And um, leaving a gift in your will is really a great way uh, to support the vital work of charities uh, that you care about. And, and um, thinking about the, uh, the charities that you'd like to support after the financial considerations of your other beneficiaries is really, I, I think a really big uh, critical part of the discussions I have with my clients. Um, your gift, uh, whether it's large or small or a percentage of your estate or a specific sum of money or, or assets, it's always gratefully received by your chosen charity. And, and I know that the Bionics Institute relies heavily on the generosity of its donors to fulfill it, its critical mission. Um, you will make your mark, uh, creating a positive impact on the lives of, of, of many Australians as, uh, you know, uh, Alice Bale and, and uh, Vera Ramachati did. Um, potentially helping most Australians, potentially uh, uh, helping your own children, your family, 
and your friends in the process. Um, and perhaps one day you might have a portrait on the wall of a, of a wealth management firm, or at least at the Bionics Institute. Um, very quickly, um, and this, this is a whole presentation in itself, but I'll skip through it. What forms part of your estate? These are the things that you need to think about. Um, your house, of course, any cash that you've got, but there's a lot of things that don't. Any trusts that you are, are a part of, uh, property that you join uh, own jointly. Your superannuation has a whole set of rules around uh, succession plans. So there's a lot to think about when it comes to estate planning and, and what you'd like to ultimately give to charity. Uh, again, what forms a part of a, a really big estate plan? Some of it is actually done while you're alive. Enduring powers of attorney is such an important part of it. Um, thinking about your super, thinking about um, incorporating uh, more complex things in your will, uh, like testamentary trusts, which are incredibly useful for beneficiaries. Here today, we're talking about that articulation of charitable intentions, though. So what does this entail? What are the tips and traps? Um, do you wish to give money to charity? Um, well, if you know, uh, you'll be making a bequest to uh, uh, set up or set up a structure to start giving while you're alive. Um, planning this out, like any other financial strategy, uh, can really make your gift more effective. So plan that giving. Um, it's really more effective for yourself as, as the donor and particularly for the recipient. The uh, you know, Bionics Institute, as an example, can tailor a program um, uh, or a particular need to the gift that you're uh, thinking about providing and for the outcome that you desire. Um, they can make that gift as effective as possible uh, if they've got the idea that you've, you've, you've got that in mind. And they can also work with you to create that legacy that, that you're looking to achieve. Um, you can give while you're alive. That's always very uh, effective. It's tax effective. You get a tax deduction for the right organizations. Um, and one of the things that you, you really should consider as well is consider um, keeping your family in the loop. So if you are, if you have other beneficiaries that you'd like, will be providing to, make sure they understand your thoughts and your reasons for giving to a particular institution. Um, outline those wishes clearly as well. Um, it's a, a will or a letter, it's almost a letter to a future judge that is going to be thinking about how um, they're going to be distributing your assets when there's a, a, a dispute of some kind. So if you articulate that in your will, um, as a side letter, that always helps uh, make sure that what happens uh, to your assets and to your legacy is what you're looking for to, to have happen. Quick example to um, demonstrate that. This is a real example. John Smith's not his real name, but he uh, had a lifetime of working with a, a, a medical research institution, and they helped him along the way. Uh, he really felt uh, that he wanted to support them. His kids, he had two kids. He, uh, he, they were wealthy, they had enough money, he wanted to give most of his estate to charity. So he uh, wanted to give his two children uh, about 500, 750,000 each, um, and gave, wanted to give 10 million to this medical research organization. Now they didn't know anything about this, they didn't know about his relationship. Um, and so they challenged the estate. Um, now the estate pays for the costs of that challenge, and what happened was the estate got diminished substantially, Ultimately, that research, that organization didn't have the resources uh, to, to really continue to fight this in the Supreme Court. So they settled um, and got a substantial amount, no doubt, um, but certainly nowhere near what John was uh, expecting to, them to receive. Uh, and so his legacy was somewhat tarnished. And I imagine he sort of rolled over a bit in his grave, uh, under, if he could understand exactly what ultimately happen. So this is where you, know, you really want to make sure you're articulating things, having those conversations, even if they're difficult with children, so that there's an understanding of what you're looking to do. Now, here's the how-to guide, um, the, 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 the nitty-gritty, really. Um, when you're giving um, assets away in your will, um, there are a few ways that you can do it. One is, in the most common ways, is you give money to your, your, your beneficiaries. Um, you, you might give particular assets to particular people or um, uh, you know put money aside for funeral arrangements, et cetera, and just say that the residual goes to your, uh, goes to your preferred charity. Another common way it, uh, to leave a charitable gift is a, is a specific gift. So a specific donation, perhaps you've spoken with Anne and said that we, need, we want to fund an endowment for a long period of time. 
Um, how do we go about doing that? How much do I need to put in uh, to my will to, to support that? Um, a really important part of this is uh, thinking about what you give uh, to which beneficiaries, and I'll touch on that in a moment, but thinking about property shares or anything else, as Anne mentioned, um, that you might give specifically to an organization. If you're looking at a, a, a significant gift uh, and you want to create an incredible impact, a, your whole estate can obviously be provided to a, a beneficiary. This is often where you know there's no family or, or preferred beneficiaries, and you just like to ensure that your gift is, is being used in the way you want it to. Finally, uh, a percentage or a fraction of your estate can be used. If you don't want to give your whole estate, you can say, look, we, I want to give 50%, 70%, 2%, whatever that number is. That the, the reason that's useful is, you know, we don't die necessarily the day after we write a will. Things change over time. And, you know, there's inflation, there's property uh, asset growth. You know, your shares might go up in value quite substantially by the time you end up uh, invoking the will, by the time your executor starts distributing assets. And so putting a, a percentage uh, of your estate in there helps uh, ensure that the impact uh, continues to grow. Or alternatively, if it drops and you've spent all the money, um, at least your charity is still getting uh, a substantial amount. So... Over to tips and traps in the actual uh, drafting of your will. And, and then sort of touched on this. The flexible drafting of your will is important. When there's um, an organization that you want to support, again, as I mentioned, once when you write your will, it might be 20, 30 years before you actually uh, uh, pass away. And so charities change. Um, charities' names change. Uh, there's amalgamations. There's mergers. Um, so being flexible in the way that you draft your will is really, really important. And this comes from uh, uh, experience as a, a state administrator and seeing this happen, it makes it much easier for your executor uh, to be able to, uh, and timely, to be able to, to put these things uh, in your will so that there's an ease as far as how you uh, distribute that particular gift and that, so that it's going to the causes that you want it to, even if that organization doesn't exist anymore. The other uh, part that I alluded to earlier is who, what you should give uh, to, to what sort of beneficiaries. When you have an asset like a property or shares, um, if you sold them during your lifetime, there would be a capital gains tax liability uh, payable to the ATO. And that uh, is payable by your state if your uh, executor sells those before distributing them out. Now that, as you can imagine, uh, diminishes the value of the overall estate for all of your beneficiaries. Um, if though you uh, pass on assets in specie or to pass them directly to a charity that has the deductible gift recipient status, which of course Biomics Institute does, um, they receive an exemption to that capital gains tax issue. And therefore they get the full value of those shares or property uh, to be able to utilize for, for their charitable purpose. What that means is obviously a greater benefit for your charity, but it's also a greater benefit for the uh, other beneficiaries uh, that you're providing to because that tax payable isn't payable any longer. And so if you're clever about how you set it up, you can really expand the value of your estate um, by doing this appropriately. Finally, uh, you, you can think about a charitable giving fund, um, and that might be an endowment within the Bionics Institute, or it could be something that you set up outside. Perpetual uh, Foundation uh, has been helping philanthropists set these up uh, since day dot, as I mentioned, since 1887, uh, and that might be a uh, an endowment fund or, or a, a private ancillary fund that you set up to uh, provide um, value to charities in perpetuity, you can name beneficiaries within that, and they, that can grow over time. That's what Alice Bale did. That's what Vera Ramashadi did. Um, but many clients uh, uh, decide to go right to their uh, trusted organization that can help you as well, set those things up so that you've got a legacy that lasts forever and ever. Finally, a very quick summary. Think about flexible drafting. Um, give the right assets to the right beneficiaries. Uh, outline those wishes uh, to your family. That's a very important part of this discussion because um, you don't want the charity that you're choosing to miss out uh, or be delayed in, in, in receiving its gift um, based on you know, a lack of information or lack of dialogue that you may have had with your family or other potential beneficiaries. And you can always think about an endowment uh, to create that 
legacy that you're looking to create um, for your family for your for your lifetime. And that's that's all for me. Um, I'm looking forward to any questions that you might have uh, at the end of this. Um, I've uh, put up our website so you can have a look at what we do in this space. But very pleased to answer any questions uh, at the end of this. Thank you. Daniel, thank you very much. Uh, and just to reciprocate, we're, we're really delighted to be working with Perpetual as one of our partner organizations in this. Um, so I'd now like to introduce our next partner organization. Uh, this is um, Gathered Here, an online will writing service that offers the service free of charge. Um, and I'd like to introduce Lucy McMorran, who is head of partner success, and she will talk about the use of online wills being written for people who have fairly straightforward estates. Lucy. Thank you, Anne. Um, thanks so much for having me here today, and hello, everybody. Uh, yeah, so I guess just before I start, just wanted to let you know um, that I'm going to be sharing some, some quite high-level information about simple wills and complex wills, and then taking you through a, a really quick demonstration of how to write a simple will online. But I'm most definitely not a, a lawyer. So if you do have anything specific um, that you want to ask about your, your situation, um, yeah, I urge you to go, go and speak to work wills and uh, estates lawyer. Um, but I will help out where I can. Um, all right, so to get started, just a little bit of information about Gathered Here. So we um, started six years ago um, as a funeral comparison website, actually. Um, and the whole idea of that was to bring some price transparency to the funeral industry um, to really help vulnerable families make really good and, and informed decisions during um, you know, an incredibly difficult time in their lives. Since then, we have grown a lot and, and um, expanded our services into um, online uh, affordable probate uh, nationally um, and also free online wills. So our mission is to make end-of-life services more accessible, uh, transparent um, and uh, approachable for everyone. So as part of that mission, we created a simply, uh, sorry, a completely free and simple um, online will platform so that everyone, regardless of their age, um, income or lo location, can plan their estates. So since we launched um, the online wills platform, um, over 27,000 wills have been written um, using our platform. Um, and we have people from all ages embracing this technology, with our youngest will writer being 21 and our oldest will writer being 101. Um, and everything in between. So um, over 60% of the wills that have been written so far um, have included one or more charitable gifts, um, which is worth an estimated $370 million, um, which I think you'll agree is quite remarkable um, and really shows what a generous bunch um, of humans Australians are, which is fantastic. Right, moving on. So um, the best part of my role is as head of partner success at Gathered Here is definitely getting to work with all these amazing charities, um, including the Bionics Institute, of course. Um, and, you know, it's a very special thing to be able to help all of these organisations um, plan for the future and really sort of future proof the, the work that they're doing. Um, so these are just a handful of the, the 200 plus charities that Gathered Here works with, um, but that list is growing every week. Um, and um, yeah, so we're, we're obviously really delighted to be able to assist um, charities in this way. Right. Now, I know that both Anne and Daniel have spoken about the importance of having a will, so I won't spend too much time on this, but um, I just really want to reiterate that, you know, having a will is just so important. Uh, it doesn't matter how old you are, um, whether or not you own a, own a house, whether you've got children, none of that matters. Anyone who's over the age of 18 should have a will. And think, you know, where charities and, and you know, online will platforms are in a, a unique position to be able to really help normalise will writing in the in society, 
um, because over 50% of Australians who should have a will do not have a will at the moment. Um, so hopefully um, by making, you know, online will writing and, and will writing much more uh, uh, accessible for, for everybody, um, in the future, you know, it won't be, it will just become like a normal thing, like paying your, your car registration or, you know, doing your taxes. It's just, you know, updating your will will just be an annual, an annual thing that everyone does. We're not quite there yet, but hopefully that will change in the coming, in the coming years. Um, yes, yeah, so you can see here, there's all these reasons why it's important to have a will. Um, and I like to quote our, um, the head of our legal team, Michael Closey, who's been a wills and estates lawyer for 20 plus years. He says, having a will is just good manners. And I absolutely love that because I totally agree. Um, and I think also um, for me, I know having a will just means that, you know, I'm being able to make sure that the values that I've, you know, held true during my lifetime carried out in a way that I would like um, when I'm no longer here. Um, and really the only way to make sure that that does happen is by having a legally valid will. Um, also, just really quickly want to touch on the difference between simple wills and, and complex wills. Um, so uh, the, the online will that I'm going to show you in a moment is a simple will um, and they are absolutely um, legally valid and a great option for people that have simple estates. Um, however, there's always going to be um, people in the, in the community that have more complicated situations, um, which is where um, our wills and estates solicitors come in. Um, and, you know, usually put together more of a bespoke type um, will for, for people. Um, so just to really quickly go through with the simple will. So they are, um, yeah, look, you, 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 when you think about a simple will, it would be, you know, obviously the online wills that are available now, but also, um, you know, your, 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 your traditional, you know, post office kit that you would go to the post office and, and pay $30 or so for a, for a kit. Um, similar sort of idea. So for, for estates that are really simple um, and, um, and the wishes are really simple as well. Um, but you can see here, they are often um, free or low cost, quick to do, they're really convenient um, and they're obviously legally valid once they're executed. Um, it's really easy to leave a charitable gift using a, a certainly using an online will platform um, and great for simple estates. So for complex estates, um, these are developed um, with a solicitor um, and these are able to deal with large estates, trusts, multiple marriages with kids from potentially from multiple marriages, overseas assets, um, yeah, families with complex medical needs or mental health needs. Um, and, you know, business owners and sometimes if you know, uh, a will writer wants to exclude a, a close man family member that may need to be um, a special provision in a in a in a will. That that simple wills just aren't, don't usually don't have the capacity um, to include these 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 out of out of out of the ordinary pr provisions. So complex wills do tend to be more expensive, um, as you'd expect, because you know you're you know deal, you're working with a wills and estate lawyer one-on-one -on -one, um, and then they're developing a, you know, a, a bespoke or a, you know, a, a tailored will specifically that meets your needs. So now we're just going to go straight into um, a present, a, sorry, a demonstration of um, Gathered Here's will writing platform. Um, so I probably will just speed through it um, and um, please feel free to ask any questions at the end. But yeah, it really is pretty, pretty quick. And like I said, this is really great for people that have pretty straightforward estates. And you'll be able to see um, now that the type of um, type of you know inclusions that there are in a simple will. All right, so we'll just get started. So this is um, the Gather Here website, um, and this is specifically for the, the Bionics Institute, this, this particular platform. So we'll just start, um, and I'm just going to put some fake details in here as well. We'll, we'll use Smith as well, like Daniel did, because that's a good old good name. All right, date of birth goes in there. So much. And then what you just say, put a fake address in there. I won't bother putting the mobile number in. So this is where you can create an account with Gathered Here. So this means that you can come back anytime in the future um, and update your will for free. So there's absolutely no charge to do that. 
Um, so you can come back in and we do recommend that people sort of every one or two years think about, um, you know, has anything changed in your life? Have you bought a property? Have you got a new pet? Have you got a new child? Um, anything like that. And you can come back in and update your will. So we'll just pop the gender in there. Uh, marital status. So let's just say for the purposes of this that um, Sally is married. So we'll just put in her husband's name in here. Okay, um, let's put, I'm just going to put my address in so no one gets a random email. There we go. Okay, then we'll go to the next stage. And you can see here as well, just on the left, there's some really, we'd really try to keep it simple. Um, we don't want to sort of bombard people with too much information that makes it a bit scary. So just some simple instructions on the left-hand side here. Um, and also, um, if you have any issues um, or questions along the way, you can ring our 1-800 number, which just goes straight through to the legal team. Um, or you can, um, you know, put, put a question into the chat box as well and, and they get answered during business hours straight away. If it's at night time, they'll be answered the first thing in the morning. Uh, so let's just put that down. Okay, let's say yes to children. So we can add children's details in now. So just name and date of birth. All right, and if you have more children, you just keep, you can keep adding as many as you need to. Otherwise, I'll just go to the next one. So now um, appointing a guardian. So if your child is under the age of 18, you are asked to appoint a guardian for them. Um, and then any name that's come up previously in this wool writing journey will appear here or you can add um, a new person in. So let's just give, so we'll go Ben Smith can be the guardian. Next, so let's say yes to pets as well. Oh, a pet, um, we'll call this one Ingo. And then next. And then you can uh, uh, appoint a guardian for your pet as well. So we'll give the same guardian as, the, as for, the, for the child. And that's that first section done. The next section is executors. This is where you specify who you'd like your executor to be. So in this case, let's choose Andrew will be the, the executor. Um, and then we're going to pick a backup executor as well in case um, for whatever reason Andrew isn't available um, to, to do that. Um, now, we do put an email address in here because uh, the executors um, and the backup executor will get an email from us once the will has been completed, just to let them know that they've been nominated as an executor, um, you know, by, 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 by this person. Um, no more details than that, just letting them know that that has happened. Um, and then it's up to the will writer to then let them know where they've kept a copy of the will. But I'll get to that in a sec. All right, so that's done. Now we get to the estate. So this is where, um, and as, as Daniel was talking about earlier, about the types of ways that people can give. So the first way is um, we've got the residual, leaving a residual gift. So for the purposes of this, I'm just going to say yes, yes to that. So... We might just do, let's do, um, we're going to leave part of the estate to the, the partner and the, and the child. Go next. Um, and then the next part is about whether leaving a gift to a charity um, that you care about. So in this case, the Bionics Institute comes up first, which is pre-ticked. So hopefully um, you'd consider leaving a gift to the Bionics Institute. If you've got any other charities that you um, that are close to your heart, you can add those in as well. Um, if they aren't listed here, you can just add that charity in with their ABN number and it will appear in your will. So let's go next. Then we then we can decide how we divide this estate. So if we say let's do 20% for the institute and then 40% each for child and partner. Um, and so next. And then we to select um, backup beneficiaries. So say Max isn't available to receive the gift for whatever reason, um, we might then say, okay, well, we want to nominate the Bionics Institute to receive his proportion of the, of the estate. Next. 
and then we do a backup for Andrew as well. So we can then say um, that we might want to, you know, choose his surviving beneficiaries, sorry, his children as the backups. Right, and then the next um, section is actually about instead of leaving a residual gift, this is about leaving specific gifts or pecuniary gifts. I won't go through that stage, but it's very similar. So you can add in a specific money amount um, to an individual or a charity. Um, and then you can also leave a personal item gift, such as jewellery, paintings, um, car. We have all sorts of things left there um, to an individual or a person. Right, then we get to, that is actually the, the whole will writing process in terms of the actual will itself is finished. We do have this final section called funeral wishes, which is totally optional, is an opportunity to specify um, get what, what you would like to be, how you would like to be farewelled. Um, and then you can, you know, choose what you like there. Again, totally optional. You don't have to put something in there. Um, and then this is a section here that so some people when they are in that sort of, you know, frame of mind that they are thinking about end of life, um, you know, so quite often um, are quite happy to or want to look at that, that option to prepay for a funeral. Um, it's not a, you know, they don't have to do that or anything like that, but if they want to get some quotes, they can, um, and that's through another part of our, of our business, but, you know, it's, it's all totally free as well. So I'll just say no to that. Then we get to the, the final section, which is the thank you section. So this is where you can choose whether or not you would like to share your intentions with, um, in this case, with the Bionics Institute. Um, and I think, as, as Anne was saying before, we love it when people do share their intentions. I mean, it's just such a lovely thing for a charity to be able to, first of all, thank um, these very generous people that are that are giving in this way in this very special way um and also just to sort of keep them in the in the loop about you know all the amazing things that are happening at the institute during their lifetime so that they they know and and can feel, can feel really good about you know that when the time does come um that their potentially transformational gift is going to make a huge impact on, 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 on the world. Um, so we ideally really want, we've pre-selected it as yes, because we really do want people to say yes so that they can be, be thanked properly, but it's completely up to the will writer as to if they want to remain anonymous um, or they want to share their details. So I'll just say yes for the purposes of this. Um, and then you get to this last section, which is um, uh, your two options um, of the type of will that you would like. So. 99.5% of people of so of the you know the 27,000 wills that we've written so far go for the free option it's absolutely um, enough for them and um, it suits all of their requirements there's a very small proportion of people that get to this stage of the will writing process and think hang on a minute I've just written the will but I have but I need to make provisions for you know xyz and it could be any of these things here so, you know, a, a medical condition or, um, you know, overseas aspects or a trust being set up. So we do offer a bespoke will writing service as well. Um, and if you if you do get to this stage and you think, oh, I'm not sure which one I need, you can just schedule a call, a 15 minute call with with one of our solicitors to have a chat. Quite often um, you'll, you'll find that, um, you know, yeah, the simple will is actually okay and they can suggest ways that you can, you know, include what you need to in the simple will. So that's just there for, as a bit of a safety net for people that think uh, that, that simple will wasn't enough for me. Um, so then you get to the this stage and you just click complete my will. Um, and it will just download it for you. Coming. Sorry, it's checking the scanning up. There we go. Right. First page is just instructions on how to execute it. So this is really important. Um, and where often, you know, if things fall down at, you know, when the time comes is when it's not executed properly. So at the moment, it's still a matter of printing out the, the will um, and having two witnesses, um, you know, in your presence, sign the will. 
uh, and stapling the will um, in the corner of the page using the same colour pen for all of the signatures. Really important, and that's how it gets executed properly. Um, soon we're actually going to be offering free reviews um, of the execution page to all wheel riders as well because it's something that that, that people um, you know still still have trouble with. So um, just to make sure that everything's um, done correctly. But yeah, so then you can just store your will in a safe place and let your executor know where that is. As mentioned before, updating your will, you just come back and um, and can log in at any time to, to, to do that, to update it. This is some more information about other um, end of life services. Then you get to the will. I'm not gonna go through all this line by line at all. It's just pretty standard, um, you know, simple will um, clauses and 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 legal, legal terms. Um, but yeah, just get to just scroll down to the execution page um, and you can see that there with your witnesses um, and the will writer there. Um, and then you've got your funeral wishes on that final page there. So that is the process of writing a simple will online. Um, I'm going to leave it there. Um, so I've um, got over by a few minutes, so I apologise. But yeah, look forward to, to having any questions if, if anyone's got any. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much, Lucy. Very informative. And thanks to both our partner organisations for providing so much information on gifts in wills. Um, we've got a few minutes to go through some um, questions. Um, yeah, we'll start out with one that, that I'll take, actually. Uh, how do you decide where my gift to the Bionics Institute goes? Um, now, we're in a very fast-moving sector, medical research, and we're also very innovative. So sometimes it can be hard for us to predict what the future holds, what research we'll be working on in the future. Um, so if we're left a gift in will that is just to the Bionics Institute, we will decide which research projects we'll work on, but it will be those research projects that will have the greatest social impact in the future, following the trajectory that we followed for the Bionic Ear. Um, and I think it's perhaps interesting at this point to talk about some philanthropic gifts that came in for work that we were doing on epilepsy and Parkinson's disease. And the philanthropic gifts, including gifts in wills, meant we were able to really accelerate the pathway of getting a product from the laboratory into the clinic. So for those two disease conditions, we actually have set up two spin-out companies who will start to sell those products ultimately, which we believe is the way to achieve truly global impact. But if your passion is for a particular area of research, we will always, always aim to honor your wishes. And, you know, Gibbs and Wills, they're vital for us in terms of long-term planning and sustainability. So we you can decide on a particular area, if it's hearing, if it's, um, if it's arthritis, if it's um, autoimmune diseases, we will always aim to the very best of our ability to honor your wishes. But those gifts and wills that are the easiest, if you like to implement, are those where we decide on what the highest priority is. Um, so a question for you, Daniel, I think here. Um, what happens if my circumstances change and I need to make changes to my will? You know, maybe somebody, one of the beneficiaries dies or I get married again. What happens? How do you deal with that? A great question. And it's it's actually something that we'd always encourage is to, to review your, your will regularly. It's not something that's said and forget by any means. Um, in fact, I've seen circumstances where, you know, someone uh, we reviewed their will after many, many years and uh, they, they were set up to give all, uh, a lot of their estate to their uh, their ex spouse, uh, which they, they were appalled by. Uh, so it's really important to review it. Um, and it, it's the same process as you would take uh, setting up your will to begin with. Um, so uh, I know I saw that in, in, in Lucy's presentation, it is relatively easy to, to update your will in that regard. 
Um, but sometimes it means, you know, rethinking, redrafting. Um, often you can just add a, a clause or uh, remove a clause or, or just change beneficiaries. And that's typically uh, relatively inexpensive as well. Okay, good. Thanks for that, Daniel. Um, and a question here from somebody who says, you know, you've talked about um, complicated estates and simple estates. And this questioner is asking, at what point, I think this might be for you, Lucy, at what point should I consider speaking to a lawyer rather than completing an online will? What's that process in the decision making setup? Yeah. yeah, good question. So I'm just going to share my screen again. I think it's probably at this point here, if you were um, going to go down the track of, of, of writing an online will, like if you think that if you if you think that your estate's simple. Um, then I, I would suggest, um, as in, you, you, you're probably not going to um, need um, any provisions set up for any of these circumstances, like overseas assets, child with a, a health issue. Um, you can see the list there, um, or you know, uh, you know, previous relationships, children from previous relationships, that kind of thing. They're probably that's probably going to need require a a bespoke will. If you, so if you think it's a simple will, then I would probably just try to like go through the process of writing a will on, on Gathered here. And then you'll get to this stage and you'll and if there's something in there that you think, oh, hang on a minute, I, I should have, I really wanted to include the fact that I really don't want to leave a gift to my, you know, one of my kids for, for some reason or something like that that you're not sure about, then you would probably schedule a call um you know with with, with just to, to have a chat to one of our solicitors or you could go if you've got a solicitor that you use regularly then have a chat to them and, and see what they say okay that, that's, that's good helpful. yeah no that is helpful and then I think we've time just for one last question um very open question what happens when I leave a gift in my will to the bionics institute um so I'll take that one the first thing is that we aim to say thank you um, because that's such an important part of, of philanthropy. Um, we would welcome you to our Catalyst community. We have a whole welcome pack. Um, ideally, we'd come and talk to you to be sure that we really understand what your wishes are so that we can fulfill them. Um, and all of this information is kept very confidential. So all our discussions with gift and will donors are supremely confidential and some people prefer to remain anonymous and we absolutely respect that too we have a whole system set up so only three or four people in the organization would know who is behind an anonymous gift um, and then what happens we once that person dies we would um, work with the solicitor or we've gathered here whoever had been the executor of the will um, and then we would, you know, let the executor know what we've done once the money's come through and we've spent it so that we can thank members of the family if that is something that the original donor would like us to do. So we're very much quite flexible on that point and really want to do the right thing by all our gift and will donors. So I'm just looking at the time. I think that needs to be the last of our questions. So I'd just like to say, a very big thank you to our two supporter organizations, uh, Daniel from Perpetual Private and Lucy from Gathered Here. Um, I'd like to thank all our participants today. I hope this information session was helpful and useful for you. We do have a whole section on our website about leaving a gift in will. Um, and we have some frequently asked questions on the website. And we also have a little brochure that we can send to people uh, for them to have a look at and, and think about. So I'd like to finish by saying, um, I hope very much that you stay in touch with the Bionics Institute. We really appreciate your, your support. Um, and we look forward to keeping in touch with you. Thank you very much. Goodbye.